Um, MASP2 auto activates. There's a fellow named Wallace, W A L I S, from the UK, who writes on MASP2. Uh, his statement is that MASP2 is the only enzyme that auto activates. I'm not sure that I understand how he can say that. Uh, I take his word for it. He knows more than I do. But if we find another auto activating enzyme, it wouldn't, wouldn't surprise me. But as it stands now, the reason that C4A, which is a very short lived product in normally in blood, is detectable consistently at high levels in these affected patients is the absence of clearance of the antigens that turned on uh, MASP2 and the absence of turning off MASP2. This is MASP2 activity is the key to sicker quicker and I got to tell you it was incredibly exciting to find that at use of VIP, after you've put out the fire and you're ready to put the coat of paint back on the house, MASP2 no longer auto activates and turns on itself and it doesn't give you the same rise of C4A that we saw beforehand. Uh, I have not seen any data on VIP effect on MASP2. Uh, all I know is that it completely reverses this out of control production of C4A and it's got to be something to do with MASP2. Uh, it certainly would be a reasonable uh, research question to ask. You'll hear C3A, C4A, and C5A described as anaphylatoxins. Uh, some of their first work described in anaphylaxis. Yeah, if you find people with dermatographia, you can get an idea of whether C4A is elevated uh, just by simply stroking on their skin. Uh, in my office, I, I have Windsor chairs. I, I like Windsor chairs. And when patients are leaning up against a Windsor chair, and I go to listen to their lungs, slip your shirt up halfway, and I see my Windsor chair bars, I think, OK, we're going to have some fun. And now it's the time to show off. Because if there's a spouse present, and you, come on, come on, let's play tic-tac-toe. Huh? And you draw a tic-tac-toe board. And be sure and go first. You never want to lose this. You never want to lose these games. And the, and the guy's going, what, what, what are you doing? What are you doing? And, and it's, the wife will say, oh, OK. Oh, look. OK, X and O, and X down here and an O over here. And you go, oh, look, I won. And, and she goes, man, look at that. The guy says, I can't see it. I can't see it. I said, well, go, go in the mirror. And what you're really doing is degranulating mast cells. You're releasing C4A. And you're changing, making the wheel in flare with increasing vascular permeability and release of chemotactic factors. In all of these uh, effects, I can remember a, a chronic fatigue patient came in and he had a port. And he was tired and he had all this peripheral edema. I said, what's going on here? He goes, man, I'm feeling bad. Listen, uh, I'm going to go home and give myself a bag of saline and I'll be back. Huh? And he went and gave himself, plugged in a big old thousand cc's of uh, normal saline. Came back, he felt a little bit better. I said, wait a minute. Your blood pressure doesn't fall now. You've repleted intravascular volume, and yet you've got extra volume expansion. I said, you got constrictive pericarditis, or right side failure, or something like that, and vena cava problems, and all this stuff. No had increased vascular permeability from high C4A. And when you fix the C4A, that pitting edema went away. He no longer needed to replenish his volume. And that was one of the tip-offs that led to looking at ADH deficiency as well. Because if you're dehydrated from ADH deficiency and your extravascular volume expanded, be looking at C4A. And you pretty much know that is not a chronic fatigue patient that is a biotoxin patient.